Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, October 9th, 2013. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Howard Brookins of the 21st Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing. Oh, thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it, Monica. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. This is a live and interactive show brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions. So if you have any questions for Alderman Brookins, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Sure. Well, obviously, my name is Howard Brookins. I am currently serving my third term as Alderman of the 21st Ward. And uh, in our new map versus old map, my boundaries roughly are from 79th Street on the north to uh, uh, 99th Street on the south from the Dan Ryan on the east. And we go as far west as Damon in certain areas of the ward, uh, of the new map. Uh, so, Alderman, you are uh, serving both uh, wards at this time? Well, m mostly me and my colleagues are serving our old and our new constituency. Depending on what the issue and the problem is, we've decided that we will work together uh, to help whatever the issues that they may have in the transition. Uh, in theory, by law, uh, the new map takes effect uh, after the new election, but still we want to get to know those new residents and, and service everybody that we can. Great. Um, please tell us about any legislation that you're sponsoring. Well, as you know, and thanks to a, a lot of callers, I sponsored the uh, littering ordinance uh, last month that it went into effect. And under that ordinance, we increased the penalties for people littering. Uh, so the uh, fine increased from $50 to $150 on the minimum fine and up to $1,500 as the maximum fine. Uh, the police officers would have uh, um, discretion to impound your vehicle if you get caught littering by throwing trash out of the window of your car. Um, we think that's important. It, it, we really need to keep our city clean. Um, it's too many senior citizens who would come to me saying, hey, Alderman, uh, after a Friday or Saturday night, I go out and in my lawn is strewn with uh, beer bottles and uh, chicken bones and et cetera. And so we really want people to uh, be respectful of our community, uh, keep it nice and clean for everybody. Uh, we're also working on an ordinance. Uh, I'm working on an ordinance with uh, Proco Joe uh, Marino, the alderman of the first ward. Uh, in uh, helping some of the victims of the birds, to uh, birds torture victims. And what we're trying to do is to uh, create a fund where some of those people who have been uh, tortured would be able to have some type of access to medical treatment and care. Uh, those people who did not sue uh, the city and who had not uh, received a settlement from the city. Thank you for that. Alderman, I did want to take a minute to uh, thank you. You've been a great supporter of CAN TV, so uh, we appreciate all your support. Um, Alderman, please tell us about the Black Caucus. Sure. Uh, well, I'm the chairman of the Black Caucus, and we've been working together. Some of the accomplishments we had were one with respect to other world remaps. Uh, we were successful in maintaining uh, 18 uh, African American districts. Uh, one of the other things that we were successful in is that we were able to get the uh, rental car companies, all the major rental cars, Hertz, Avis, uh, Enterprise, uh, to come up with uh, 30, roughly $30 million in new spend money to spend on uh, minorities, so African Americans, Hispanics, women, minority business. And again, this is new money that they had not, under their old contract, uh, been required to participate in any minority set-aside program. And so those people who can provide services, whether they're car windshields, body work, new cars, uh, uh, fluids, whether it's oil or gas or, or, or whatever, uh, can, you know, actually uh, work with the rental car companies and, and, and uh, be a participant in that. Um, We've, you know, also been working and, and fighting to try and make things fair for all minorities, uh, women and African American and Hispanics within the city. Uh, one of the major things that was coming up is at the O'Hare um, concession stands. 
Uh, and so we have really been pushing the administration to make sure that when they do the new uh, contract to modernize O'Hare, that African Americans and other minorities will have their fair share uh, and a fair shake at being able to get those contracts and opportunities out at O'Hare. Um, as you know, that is hundreds of millions of dollars that goes through the concessions there at O'Hare. And we think it only be fitting that our residents and, and the local minority communities be able to partake in that. Thank you for that. Um, you're watching Political Forum, a community service brought to you by Can TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres. If you have any questions for the alderman, please call us at 312-738-1060. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Uh, thank you for taking the call. Hi, I wanted to know the uh, process by which uh, residents or homeowners can make a request into the alderman's office. Is it just calling the um, office number? Because uh, I've been making calls and talking to a, a Carla and to a uh, uh, Ms. Smith and, and haven't been getting any responses. So is there a more direct way? Well, I'm trying to find out about curb and gutter repair. Okay. Um, two things. One, you, you've done the right thing, and I'm, I'm sure that they put it on a list. We get those calls all the time. Uh, two, you can just walk in and see me any Tuesday night without having an appointment. Uh, I get there and start seeing people at 430, and we go till 7 o'clock. So you don't need an appointment. You can just show up, and it's first come, first serve. You can come to our town hall meeting, which meets every fourth Saturday at the Woodson Library at uh, 95th and Halsted, uh, every fourth Saturday at 9.30. We meet uh, uh, January through October. So next month, or this month, is our last town hall meeting into the first of the year, and that's because the fourth Saturday in November and December generally falls around Thanksgiving and Christmas, and so nobody would be coming to the town hall meetings during that time. Um, but uh, curb and gutter is one of those things that would uh, get repaired under the menu. Um, there are a bunch of requests, and we generally always run out of money, but I'd be more than happy to talk to you about your individual problem if you want to just pop in on a Tuesday and see me. Uh, but rest assured that if you talk to Curtis, Jediah, or Carla, they've already put in the request. And it will just take uh, time to till we get to you to fix it. Thank you, caller, for your for your call. Uh, we, I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great, uh, brother Alderman. I just have a couple of uh, points I want to bring across, and I don't want to I don't want to diminish your. Uh, uh, situation with the uh, picking up the trash and things, but you're the uh, president of the, uh, you're the head of the uh, Black Caucus. Yes, sir. I'd just like to know, i just like to know, can we have some uh, proposals to have harsher penalties for dealing drugs in the uh, uh, city? Uh, I think that's a much, much more uh, poignant uh, uh, issue and throwing trash out of uh, people's windows. And one more thing is, uh, I'd just like to know, is the uh, Black Caucus uh, even considering uh, looking for a replacement to run against uh, Rahm Emanuel on the next election, or are they uh, just pleased with his work and uh, just uh, going to let that go? I guess I, I'll start with the last question, and, and no, we're not actively at, at this point looking for a replacement for anybody, but I, w I will say that the history in, in uh, after Mayor Daley uh, resigned, uh, we did conduct uh, um, extensive outreach to the community to try and find a replacement, and the replacement that we came up with at that time, the community didn't seem to want to follow us with. Uh, with respect to harsher penalties for drugs, one, the city can only write ordinances that would be misdemeanors. And the uh, people that you would need to talk to would be our state reps and our state senators. But I would submit to you that we have some of the harshest penalties for dealing drugs uh, in this country uh, right now that are on the books. And that uh, the current state's attorney has been uh, going gun ho uh, at these people to throw them in jail. 
I, I submit to you that um, we could lock everybody up, um, but we're still not going to resolve our problem, especially within the African American community and communities of color. One of the reasons and one of the things that is causing so much uh, violence in our community and also drug sales in our community is the lack of opportunities within our community. Uh, back at the height of the real estate boom, when everybody appeared to be working and everyone, everybody in the country, the African American unemployment uh, in the city of Chicago was at 17%. Uh, and that was then while everybody was working. Uh, Chuck Schumer did a, a study um, even back in that time and said that 50% of the African American men uh, in this state were unemployed. So we really need to do something to address unemployment, and that's where I've been trying to focus the caucus on to get as many opportunities for African Americans and minorities as possible because I believe that that is one of the few ways that we're going to bring ourselves out of the situation that we have with respect to uh, violence and drug dealing that are going on in our community. Thank you, caller, for that question. Mm -hmm. And speaking of um, employment, uh, can you tell us about any economic development that's going on? Oh, well, sure. We do have a couple of new projects, well, three projects, two that are actually being under construction now. There's a private hotel being built on 83rd and Holland, uh, right behind the uh, Walmart and the Aldi's there. Uh, the hotel is for railroad engineers, so you can't go and check in. They will have a restaurant that will be open to the public, but as uh, the railroad engineers from Norfolk, Southern, and the other uh, railroads uh, drive the trains in, uh, the NTSB requires that they take a break. So that is where they will go uh, for rest and then get back on the train. Um, we're also building the Chase Bank. Uh, both of these projects, uh, the, the general contractor is Ujamaa Construction, uh, which is a minority-owned, uh, African-American-owned firm uh, that started out locally on 76 and Stewart. And also uh, we have fellowship that will be shortly moving into the award at the old Soft Sheen Carson L'Oreal building uh, under the guidance of uh, Pastor Charles Jenkins. We're really excited about that um, project going up there. Not only will it be his church and the sanctuary, but it will be schools, it will be uh, a medical clinic, uh, it will be other businesses right there at 83rd and the, uh, or 87th and the Dan Ryan right at the Soft Sheen Carson L'Oreal. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Um, I had a question, Alderman. Um, are the Divi bikes going to come to uh, to the to uh, the twenty first uh, ward? Interesting. You know, I I have to uh, take my hat off to uh, uh, Gabe. Um, what can I think of his last name? The, the the commissioner of the Department of Transportation. I never thought that those bikes would take off the way that they have. And I was wrong, and kudos to him to have that vision. I would assume that the bikes would be spread uh, across the city as as need, uh, uh, um, as the demand exists for it. Uh, we would welcome those bikes uh, within the city. I, I, I would assume that they would be as successful in the 21st Ward as they are in other locations, and we would welcome them there. Thank you, Carla, for that question. You're watching Political Forum, a community service brought to you by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres, a CAN TV board member. Our guest for today is Alderman Howard Brookins, Jr. of the 21st Ward. So if you have any questions for the Alderman, please call us at 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, you were talking. they were talking about uh, legislation and employment. Um, Please tell us about uh, the new ordinance with uh, gun control, with the uh, carrying conceal. Well, right now the uh, Illinois Supreme Court in a series of rulings has determined that um, uh, the statute that makes uh, aggravated unlawful use of a weapon to be unconstitutional uh, in Illinois. And so Springfield has written a new law. Uh, the city of Chicago has amended its laws where you had to register your gun. You couldn't take it. Uh, you couldn't take your lawfully uh, held gun 
uh, to your garage or in your backyard, et cetera, and so forth. And so those laws are now out. Um, in effect, shortly, there will be a process where you can sign up to have a concealed carry. And, and while that law has been passed by Springfield, I'm not certain of all of the hoops that you will have to jump through in order to get your concealed carry permit. Um, but, you know, we'll see how that is going to work. Um, with respect to the caucus, there was one other thing that I did not mention. Uh, the City of Chicago Black Caucus actually has a forum on uh, CAN TV, and we are every third Wednesday uh, here at, on this channel at uh, 8 o'clock, and it is a live call-in. And one of my colleagues uh, from the other wards are here each and every uh, month to talk about what went on in City Hall that day and uh, what's going on in their individual wards. Great. Thank you, Alderman. I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for taking my call. Uh, my name is Carol Harold, and I'm a member of the Committee for uh, Media Access, which is uh, our main goal is to support can TV as much as we can. And it's so wonderful to have you on Political Forum. And I didn't know about this other program that you just told us about, which is also a wonderful call-in program for speaking with our aldermen. Um, what we were wanted to do is to make sure that uh, with the Comcast uh, franchise renewal coming up, that the circumstances are as favorable as possible for CAN-TV, that uh, the funding is good and the, the amount of independence that they uh, have continues. Last year, I, when uh, RCN was renewed. We got a lot of support from uh, the aldermen for uh, a really good uh, contract renewal, and we're hoping that it'll be as good as or better than what well, uh, the, the uh, city council was able to get through for um, RCN. So, could you, because you're the head of the Black Caucus, I feel like I'm speaking to you <laughs> as uh, I'm speaking to a whole bunch of people that. Uh, we can count on for support. So thank you so much for taking my call. I'm sorry I talked so long. Looking forward to listening to you now. Thanks so much. No, we appreciate the call, and I think that this is a wonderful uh, venue uh, for people to come together and talk to each other. Um, it would be a shame if, if it went away, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that Can TV has the funding going forward so that they can continue to bring you good programming and a vital service to the community. Um, the last time, uh, I believe all of our members signed off on uh, the, the resolutions and the efforts to continue it. We're going to continue to fight with uh, Comcast to make sure that they pay their uh, fair share so that CAN TV continues to thrive. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Okay, my question is, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Alderman Brookings for his services because he's doing a great job. My question is this. Uh, we were literally 80th block of Ada, and they were paving the streets. And the problem, that the issue that we have is, is that we waited like almost 20, 30 years for these streets to be repaved. And then the gas company came and tore it up and left paint everywhere. What is, are they planning on coming back to clean it up or to clear it? And we've got no answers they called and they promised and still haven't heard anything. Uh, to, I'm sorry, to clean the paint up? To clean the paint up? The, paint, the, the, the streets are like tore up. They got little pieces. I mean, we had the whole street paved. Yeah. And, with, you know, we paid for the speed bumps. We got those. But the problem was is that when the gas company came in, they tore part of the streets up. And now it's like they could have just left the way it was before they paved it. Gotcha. Um, one, I will call our representative uh, that is assigned to city council from People's Gas and make sure that they get out there and do that. And that brings up another thing. Um, there were some people mad at me that we did not pave their streets or, or the streets were rejected. And one of the things that the new, Gabe Klein, that's his name, one of the things that the new commissioner uh, has implemented is that if they know that there's some work scheduled to be done on that street, they will not let the alderman pave it anymore. And so just like the gentleman said, uh, under the old administration, I would pave a street, water, people's gas, or someone else would come out the next year and tear it up, and it was as though uh, we'd never done the street before. But I will work with you in the 800 block of Ada to make sure that uh, they get out there and they do repair the street 
and let any other callers know out there that uh, some people call in the alderman, the various aldermen's offices mad because the street is in such horrible repair. But some of those streets uh, are taken off of our list because they are slated for water main or other things and they will not do that anymore. Fix a street to tear it up the next year. Thank you, Carla, for that mm -hmm. question. Um, you're watching Political Forum. Um, I'm going to be showing uh, Alderman Howard Brookins' uh, contact information. It's 9011 South Ashland. His phone number is 773-881-9300. And his email is war21 at cityofchicago.org. So if you have any questions, you have his contact information. Alderman, um, can you please tell us about, uh, is there any other issues that you see uh, where the city should be going in terms of priorities? Well, and as we come up in, and this is the budget season now, uh, the mayor's announced that we're roughly $320 million uh, in a hole. And I would really like to hear from the public going forward to determine where our priorities should be in spending the little money that we do have. Uh, it is important to hear from you if those programs are cut out and things that you really look forward for to or that you want the city uh, to be engaged in. Now is the time to get a hold of your representative to really fight for those things because those things may be on the chopping block. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Oh, yeah, I think I heard them say that your uh, office is on Ashland, and I was wondering if I would be involved with the bus rapid transit on Ashland at all, and if you're for it or against it, um, and if that's ever going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, one, uh, yes, our, our office would be involved in that. And what the gentleman is talking about is that there was a plan by the Department of Transportation to have, for lack of a better term, express buses. And these buses would travel essentially down the center of of the street, and they would only stop every mile. So they would stop at, for example, 95th, 87th, 79th, um, 63rd, etc. And it seems like a wonderful idea. One of the reasons why people hate to take the buses, they're so slow. It seems as though you could walk as fast as the bus would take you because the bus is stopping at every block. Um, this idea has worked in other uh, countries and other places. Seems like a good idea. Uh, and whatever can move people uh, throughout the city easier, uh, I am for it. And so th I think that this could be a wonderful idea. Thank you, Carla, for your question. Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Is there any final words you would like to say to the public? Well, one, um, we don't know it all. And, and a lot of people think that uh, the alderman or whatever they like that official is has all the answers. Uh, we count on you, the public, to come to us with great ideas, to come with us uh, with problems or solutions to problems that we may not have thought about uh, in order to help you. Uh, the government has limited resources, although it seems as though we have unlimited resources, but we do. And we have to prioritize those things that um, get fixed within our communities. Uh, we appreciate serving you and, and, and working with you uh, and would ask for more community engagement. The only way that we're going to solve our problems, especially within our communities that are besieged with this violence, is if we all come together and work together and say, uh, no more. We're not going to accept it. Uh, we're, we're not going to deal with it. Uh, we have to be vigilant. We have to call the police. We have to organize uh, our community and our neighbors so that we uh, feel emboldened uh, when there is a problem to go forward and uh, talk to those people and address that issue head on. Thank you, Alderman, for those uh, words. Um, Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Thanks Forum. Thanks for having me. It went by quick. <laughs> uh, thank you, you, viewers, for your calls. Our telephone technician for today was Steve. Uh, Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.